Hi all, today we're looking at injectors um, and how to basically fix your own. Now, there's going to be a lot of people who don't like the look of this video, uh, lots of diesel um, injectors especially, so you're going to say this is complete rubbish, but it has worked for me many, many times. Right, this only works for the injectors with a pintle. You see that little thing there, that little dingle that sticks out the top there? That's the pintle. Now there's several injectors, they're usually thinner, they sort of they go much, much thinner, like a you know, like a pen and they're rounded at the tip. Um, it doesn't work for those. So what we're looking at is, you know, if you want to recondition your own injectors. Now, you can just buy your own new nozzles and stick them in. I'll show you how to do that. Um, don't get me wrong. Uh, by rights, you should then adjust them to set them up correctly. But in all honesty, I've never had any problem by just banging a new nozzle in. But if you've watched many of my videos, you'll know I'm going to show you how to do it yourself without having to buy one of those, which is 26 odd quid. So the tricky bit is always going to be getting this off. Now what you've got here is this here covers the adjuster. Now obviously I've pre-loosened all of this. That there is the adjuster. That adjusts the pressure of... Um, uh, 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 that comes out, you know, the pressure that this injector opens at. What we're going to do, we're going to leave that alone. What we're going to do is we're going to undo it from this end. Now, it's quite tricky. If you can get that in the vise, don't obviously squeeze the threads here. If you can get that in the vise, and what I'd recommend is getting this outer sheath hot with a blow lamp. Not red hot, but just warm it with a blow lamp there. And then get it, sort of just get it so you can just start to see the, the sort of the old muck here bubble slightly. Get a set of grips or a spanner, get it in place, and then just give it a tap with a hammer to try and free this up. Now do bear in mind that this is your ceiling face right here, so when your injector goes down and in, that's where your copper washer goes. Just on copper washers, by the way, at the point where you take this out, you need to take your copper washers out as well. They sit round here. Now, when you take a copper washer out, you'll find that it's got hard over time and it won't reseal properly. The trick is, get your washer, heat it stinkingly hot with a blow lamp, and drop it straight into some water. So do basically what you would do to temper a piece of steel, harden a piece of steel. If you do the same thing to a piece of copper, get it really hot, glowing hot, drop it into something cold immediately, it goes soft. Pretty cool. Do that, they'll seat lovely. Anyway, I'll shut up and get on with it. Right, so, get this out, you undo this, and then what you're left with is the nozzle like that and it's just held away just slightly from the body by spring pressure because what it's doing is this is holding this down tight against the spring pressure from in here so we'll get the nozzle off like so just removes like that and look there's nothing more to it you can even tell which way around it goes because there's offset pins and all things like that um, occasionally there's a little washer in here but that doesn't make any difference it's the same thing just watch how it comes out so that is your little nozzle. Now that nozzle there, it's the same as, well it's not actually the same because this is off a different one, but this is uh, a nozzle as well. And there you go. You could just throw your new nozzle in. Obviously this doesn't fit because this is for a Kubota, but oh, that might do. Um, throw your new nozzle in, do it up, jobs are good. But these are 26 quid each, so that's kind of pricey. Um, right, so what goes wrong with these? Well, first of all, let's have a little look and see how they work. Now, I'm going to do it with a clean one so that you can see easier. Right. What it is, is this is called the pintle, this little piece here. And I don't know if it'll focus very well, but you see how it's got a sharp end on it? That little sharp end blocks that little tiny hole. Uh, well, you know, you get the point. Uh, blocks that tiny little hole there. Now, the pressure of the diesel being pushed in by the injector pump acts on this shoulder here, because it's quite a big area, and pushes it away which then lets the diesel inject out like that. So, a couple of things that can happen. First thing is, is that it doesn't seat properly here, and when the engine fires, the pressure from it firing blows bits of carbon back up in here. That makes then this pintle stick, and sometimes you'll even find that, because you're supposed to just be able to feel the pintle sticking out, maybe by a millimetre, you'll find that the pintle's gone. And what's happened is, it's still firing, it's still injecting, it's not running very well, but it's still um, injecting diesel. But the pintle and it's this piece has got stuck up in the body with the carbon. So, what do we do to fix this? Well, first of all, we've got to get that pintle out. Now, it was easy there, 
um, because this is a brand new nozzle. But usually they're not that easy. Now there is a trick to get them out. What I'll do, I'll just show you. So here's this one. I have actually pre-loosened it, but it's still a bit tight to get out. The trick is, get your drill, catch the end of the pin, pin in there, like that. There you go, and you'll see there's a good reason for this in a minute. See that? And then you can just spin it, still quite tight, and get it out. You may need to do that a bit, you may need to run a little bit of oil down, but doing this, you're not horsing on it too much. And also, don't worry, because the pintle itself, the little the body of this doesn't really act on anything. Sorry, not the body, but the, um, the, uh, the little shank on here doesn't act on anything. All this little peg's job is, is to be held down by the spring. So if you scratch that, don't worry. If you scratch this, problem. Right, so the carbon gets built up in there and it makes this stick, and also, you'll see the tiny little ceiling thing here, um, that sometimes can get, I don't know, little bits of, of muck in it and stuff like that, uh, and what happens then is the injector drips, you'll know that because you take the injector out and be wet at the end. What do we do to clean this out? Well, it depends how harsh you want to go. Um, a couple of things you can do. My favourite, and um, <clears throat> I'm being kind today, I haven't brought the whole toothpaste tube out to the garage with me, is to get some toothpaste. Now toothpaste has got chalk and stuff in it. Now there's going to be loads of freaking out by all the people who recondition these things properly and they'll be squealing at me that this is just terrible. But let's just consider for a minute what's the worst we can do, right? Think about this. What we're going to do is we're going to get the carbon off here so that it slides freely in here like that one does. If we take loads of metal off here, all that's going to happen is that we're going to get more leak back. You know the, the top pipes off the injector, how they, they let a little bit of diesel back. If we really wear this away, we're going to get more leak back. But we're not going to do anything too nasty to the engine. If we wear this little pin at the end away too far, all we're going to do is we're going to move this uh, pin, its seating position, down a tiny bit. But let's be honest, let's just look at this in reality for a minute, okay? How accurate do you really think you can get with an adjustment screw that's got a thread that thick on it. Do you really think you can get as accurate as, as you might need, as you know, as, as, as that with something like that? Because, I'm sorry, you just can't. On the new diesels, don't get me wrong, on, on something new, fine. But, you know, when you're talking a piece of equipment that's, uh, you know, got some age to it, you're not going to be getting um, that level of accuracy. Bear in mind, um, you know, the Kubotas use these things. Uh, computers use these things, uh, the Yanma uses um, nozzles like this, um, phew, most of the mini diggers, Perkins 103, um, most of the older diesels, most commercial, you know, most big, um, most industrial diesels use this type. Now all I'm going to do to clean this out, I'm going to take my drill and I'm just going to, there we are. And all I've done is I've just spun it quickly in there, dropped it down to the face, and we'll now find it's gone from being really, really hard up against that, uh, you know, really, really hard to get in and out of that um, space, to, to slipping into it, once I've cleaned the toothpaste out of the groove, slipping in really, really easily. It's a quick, it's an easy, it's an effective way to do it. And, I mean, that's, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, God, just like I did to begin with, these diesel things, they need to be to millimetric perfection. Um, these engines will run briefly with no spring in the pintle. No, not briefly, they run for a while with no spring in the pintle, so it's just spraying out. They do choke up. I'm just, uh, all I'm doing in the background is I'm just, look, I'm just running a cloth down inside here, the tip of a cloth down inside here to get the bits of toothpaste out. Bear in mind, toothpaste is good because it's water-based. So what you can do is uh, you can then with the water based and look at that it goes it's goes in lovely well not as lovely as it will do but you can see how now we've got some movement to that whereas before it was jam solid you can actually see all the carbon deposits on it here you can see how it's it's you know it's um, other things mur you know the polish you use for cars or just general polish for cars um, will do it as will jewelers paste I would say you're going a bit far if you're using cutting paste, um, but I have done it. 
Uh, you want to be looking then also at the end of the pintle, the tip of the pintle. The very tip, by the way, is just the guide. I know you won't focus, but it's sort of stepped. It goes big step, medium step, uh, sorry, uh, you know, like, like an angled bit, a flat bit, an angled bit, and then there's the bit that seals, and then there's a little guide on the end. The idea for the guide is the guide sticks out. It isn't the sealing piece. The tiny bit at the end isn't the sealing piece. It's just to let it guide so as it comes back in the right place. Anyway, so there we are. Um, don't be don't be afraid of having a go because I, there isn't much that can go wrong. And as I say, I've run. Um, I've got these. Um, I've done this. Uh, you know, I've I've run an engine. I, I when I I got an engine the other day and um, I thought, oh, the pintle's gone. Uh, and it was there was no pintle at all. I thought, damn it, because the engine was in bits when I got it. I thought, damn it, the um. Someone's dropped the injector and broken the pintle off. So I didn't think too much of it. I, um, you know, I, I, I tried the injectors before I ran it. I saw they were spraying. Not well, but they were spraying. And I just threw it back in. Uh, and what had happened, actually, was that um, someone had stripped the injector. And you see this little piece here that pushes and holds that. So with the spring, it holds that down. That was gone. So that pintle was just free in there. There was nothing pushing on it at all. It was just pushing out of there. Ran fine. Um, so don't get me wrong, what it did do is it did send carbon back up this and it did choke it. But um, it does just show you that these things really don't need the level of perfection that um, quite often people will tell you they do. Um, there we are. Um, I hope that helps. Um, as I say, when you're putting them back in, get your copper washer. This isn't the one because this is the one higher up, but just get that, heat it with a blow lamp till it's scorching hot. You'll know because it'll go uh, it'll go sort of slightly lighter shade. Uh, and dump it straight into cold water or cold oil. Um, obviously not too little amount of oil, you'll get a fire, but um, dump it in and that shock cooling will make that go soft again. Um, so what you can do then is you can, um, you know, it, it'll seat when you put it back in. There we are guys, I hope that helps, um, sharing with you what I can. Cheers for now.